health expert at, at Life Extension, and uh, welcome to have you back. So, a big hand of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me back. Mitch, you're going to be my thing, right? Okay. So, today we're going to talk about. Um, well, first of all, let me tell you something about the word anti aging. I've never been a fan of that word. I usually use like um, age management or something along those lines, but it is true. We are getting on the verge of a lot of amazing research where I'm going to start saying anti-aging with a lot more confidence. Or even the words age reversal, where we can actually take the cells inside your body and revert them back to where they were younger, like 20, 30 years ago. So there's a lot of exciting research going on in age reversal. Um, the only issue with a lot of it is it's still research. It's not really stuff that we can do yet. So what I want to talk about today are things that you can actually do right now to add healthy years to your life. And that's what we call anti-aging nutrition. Today's regimen for tomorrow's benefits. So Mitch, let's go to the first slide. Thank you, Mitch. We're going to start off first talking about nutrition. What foods should you be eating right now to extend your life. Any thoughts? Anybody have any ideas? What food should you be eating right now to extend your life? A lot of greens. So even though my name is Smith, my mom's side of the family is Greek. My grandfather's name was Apostle Scrogiani. Um, it's a kind of like a Greek Albanian mix. And we used to go over there. They lived in St. Louis. I don't know how they got from Greece to St. Louis. No one ever told me that story. But we would go visit them and my grandma, Mary Scrogiani, when she cooks food, it was mostly dark, leafy greens. Lots of fermented foods, a lot of fermented like cheeses, tomatoes, olives, but the protein they ate was very small. A lot of times we think of the Greeks as eating all this wonderful lamb, and that was there, but that was not the main food source. It was the seeds, the nuts, the tomatoes, the olives, and the green. So we're going to talk, we're actually going to answer this question. What should you be eating daily to increase your healthy lifespan? We already heard about the greens. Let's go to the next slide, Mitch. I want to talk about the Mediterranean diet. You guys know about the Mediterranean diet, right? Obviously I want to talk about it because that's where my family comes from. And by the way, I have uncles, I have a great uncle that is still alive right now at 108. And they eat the Mediterranean diet. They don't, it's not a diet to them, it's just what they eat. <laughs> it's just how they do it, right? Um, it's a well-balanced diet, obviously includes healthy fats, complex carbs, you know, lots of fresh food, not processed, right? Fresh foods, that's one of the key things. Um, we've seen that by eating the Mediterranean diet, you can lower your cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, Reduce the risk of heart disease, brain disorder, cancers. These are all well-established science facts about the Mediterranean diet. But here's the thing. What do you think, when you're eating that kind of food, the greens, the olives, the tomatoes, some fermented cheese, I mean, these are good things. When you're eating, what is the key compound you're getting out of that? Because that's what we asked at Life Extension. We said, when somebody is eating the Mediterranean diet as best they can, What's the key thing that they're getting in their body that's increasing their healthy lifespan? Let's go to the next slide. And it's this word right here, polyphenols. You guys hear polyphenols before? Yeah. It's just a fancy word for plant-based antioxidants. Polyphenols are plant-based antioxidants. Studies have shown, look at this, look at this third bullet point here. 30% reduction in the risk of dying from any cause when you have a certain amount of polyphenol intake in your diet. This is how powerful polyphenols can be. And guess where you find polyphenols? Leafy greens, fruits, right? Those kind of things. There's some good polyphenol content in olive oil. That's why, probably why it's so healthy for us. So this is the key thing that we're getting when we eat the Mediterranean diet. A recent study examined the natural intakes of polyphenols in more than 800 men and women over a uh, period of 12 years, and that's where they got that 30% reduction in what we call all-cause mortality, meaning they're living longer when you eat 
polyphenols. And the Mediterranean diet, if you follow it, that's, that's the, the, the point, right? You gotta follow it, it's hard. But if you follow the Mediterranean diet on a day-to-day -day basis, you will get enough polyphenols that you could fall into this 30% reduction of mortality. That's how powerful they are. Next slide, Mitch. So here's a, a nice table. This is in the slide. Everybody got the slides, right? So you have, take your notes, you can take it home. So your goals, if you want to follow this diet, your goals to get to, uh, polyphenols, if, if you eat or uh, take in about four teaspoons a day of olive oil, about three servings of tree nuts and peanuts, three to two, two to three servings of fruits and vegetables, and when it comes to the vegetables, it's cruciferous and dark leafy greens, right? Cruciferous and dark leafy greens. Uh, fish, legumes, you guys know the difference between a legume and a nut? Anybody? Uh, I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nuts yeah. are all in trees. Yeah, nuts are in trees, legumes are in the ground. That's all it is. So a peanut is actually not a nut, it's a legume. It grows underneath. So lots of legumes, about three servings a week. Um, white meat, wine. That's optional. I prefer a glass of red wine with every, with every dinner I have. It's red wine, yes, you definitely want the red wine. So anyways, you can see this table. This will help you to reach your polyphenol goal. Your goal is about 1,500 milligrams a day of polyphenols. Listen, that's tough. I mean, I think my grandparents, my, my great uncle that's still alive, I think they were getting 1,500 milligrams a day of polyphenols, but they were following a Mediterranean diet because that's just what they grew up with. We're not getting 1,500 milligrams at all a day. Um, uh, Life Extension came out with a product called um, the Mediterranean Whole Food, uh, Whole Food Blend. And in that one capsule, it's about 400 milligrams of polyphenols. So I try my best to eat the Mediterranean diet, get those polyphenols, but I also take a capsule of that supplement and that kind of fills in that gap for me. So we do provide a supplement to help you reach it. If you want to learn a lot more about the Mediterranean diet, I have a book. It's at lifeextension.com slash mddiet. It's a free ebook, and you can learn a, probably more than you ever wanted to know about the Mediterranean diet, to be honest with you. I actually go through a lot of the, the research showing the benefit to cancer, to heart disease, brain disease, uh, not just longevity in the ebook. So we need to eat lots of polyphenols, leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, lots of fruits, Glass of red wine fits into that. Be careful. One to two for a man, one for a woman. Yes, it's unfair. We may get to drink a little bit more. Are you talking about a bottle, one to two bottles? No, one <laughs> glass. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. One to two glasses a day. Very good. Um, all right. So let's. So that's the big thing. Mediterranean diet is the diet we want to follow. It's the diet of longevity enthusiasts like myself. It's the diet of life extension, and it's really all about the polyphenols. Okay? All right, let's go to the next slide, Mitch. What I want to do now is I want to talk specifically about some supplements that we offer that I think could make a major impact right now in adding years to your life. Okay? So what we're going to look at is um, utilizing longevity properties of key nutrients that target aging mechanisms. And what I mean by that is Every day we're learning more and more about what happens inside the cell that causes us to age. See, we're not so much focused on the outward appearance of aging, although that's important to us. What we're really focusing on at Life Extension is at the cell level. And we're learning a lot what goes on inside the cell that causes us to age and eventually die. So we're focusing on these mechanisms, these pathways of aging, and how can we manipulate them? And we've come up with some really good stuff. So let's go to the next slide. And the first one we do have to talk about is energy. <laughs> cell energy, think about it. If your cell cannot make consistent energy moment to moment, it can't function. And if the cell can't function, the tissue breaks down. If the tissue breaks down, the organ breaks down, and eventually the organism breaks down. 
Cell energy and, and, and being able to optimize that is the first key step to longevity. And we're going to talk about making more powerhouses inside your cells. Inside the cell is this thing called a mitochondria. You guys ever hear of that? You guys are familiar with that, right? The mitochondria is this amazing organelle that is able to bring in food energy and turn it into chemical en energy called ATP. The problem is, as we get older, what do you think happens to the amount of mitochondria we have in our cells? Does it go up or down? Yeah. Way down. As a matter of fact, by the age of 70, we've lost upwards of 60% of the mitochondrial content throughout our body. That's what, that means we're really struggling to make cell energy. It's one of the reasons as we get older, we're tired. We're fatigued. Our organs begin to break down. It all comes back to cell energy. So we want to be able to make more powerhouses. We want to add more mitochondrial content to each cell. And we're going to do that with a nutrient called pyroloquinoline quinone. Now, I've been talking, now to abbreviate this, we call it PQQ. Is that better for everybody? PQQ, right? I've been traveling throughout the country. I was just in the Philippines recently, actually, uh, doing lectures on PQQ. I'm not going to stop talking about PQQ until I have everybody taking it. That's how much I believe in this very important nutrient. Let's go to the next slide. So, very simple thing, right? It's amazing when you think about it. We can eat something, and then my body can extract energy from that. I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? And it all happens inside the mitochondria. I eat food. Chemical energy from food comes in. The mitochondria turns that into ATP. That's the energy currency of the body. That then fuels all my metabolism. So we want to always make sure this process of food to ATP is optimized. But if you've lost your mitochondria, it's not optimized. And I just told you, by the time you're 70, you've lost like 60%. So we've got to do something to get the powerhouses back, the mitochondria back, so we can make more ATP. Next slide, Mitch. So this is just a fancy um, picture of a cell. Cells are very complex. There's a lot of um, parts to a cell. In particular, we're focused on this guy right here. That's called the mitochondria. Your cell has many of these. If it's a heart cell, it has thousands of these mitochondria. Brain cells, thousands of these mitochondria. If it's a, um, a fingernail cell, maybe not as many. I mean, it just depends on the cell line. But the point is, it doesn't matter what cell it is. As we get older, we lose these guys right here. So we're going to get them back. Next slide. All right, so we do believe at life extension that ultimately, Aging is the breakdown of the powerhouse, the breakdown of the mitochondria. Mitochondrial decay, we believe, is aging. Uh, this is just an artist um, rendition. Here's a nice, healthy mitochondria, makes like lots of energy. But as we get older, you, know, you think about it, every time you take in food plus oxygen, that's important, right? Food plus oxygen, your mitochondria can turn that into ATP. But every time it does that, that oxygen creates a free radical. You guys ever heard of free radicals? Mm -hmm. Free radicals, are they good or bad? Yeah. Bad. Yeah. bad, right. The buildup of free radicals over time we call oxidative stress. So every time you breathe in, and you make energy good, there's a flip side to it, a downside to it, and that is the production of free radicals. So over time, the mitochondria gets, gets destroyed from all of those free radicals that it's generating. So it's kind, of, it's kind of weird, right? It's like, I need the mitochondria, I need the oxygen, I need the food to make ATP, but every time I do, I kind of destroy the mitochondria a little bit. That process of oxidative stress in the mitochondria is what we call mitochondrial decay. And it is one of the leading theories of aging. It's been one of the leading theories of aging since the 1950s, and it still is one of the leading theories. 
So we want to take these old mitochondria and we want to make brand new ones. Forget these. These, aren't, these old ones in our cells today, they're just not able to work. So it's not about repairing them, it's really about making brand new ones. And that's what PQQ, pyroloquinoline quinone, does for us. Mitch? So pyroloquinoline quinone, <clears throat> it's ubiquitous in the natural world. Makes sense, right? Every cell, whether it's plant kingdom or animal kingdom, needs to make energy, right? Um, and PQQ plays a role in energy pathways, even outside of the mitochondria. That's how important it is. I have a big picture of kiwi, because kiwi is one of the few, few foods that actually has a decent amount of PQQ in it. Now, it's still not that much. <laughs> you would probably have to eat about 50 kiwis a day, maybe to get a milligram of PQQ, and the effective dose of PQQ is about 20 to 40 milligrams. So you would have to eat a lot of kiwi. I don't think anybody wants to do that. But kiwi is, I guess, a decent source of PQQ. Uh, PQQ has been found in just about every plant species to date, and it's an essential micronutrient. So here's the thing. PQQ increases mitochondrial content. I want, that's what I want you to remember in this lecture for this part. PQQ makes more mitochondria. Everybody say that with me. PQQ makes more mitochondria. You're going to remember that, right? That's the take-home message. And hopefully when I'm done today, you're going to go out and buy some because it, 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 I'm not selling anything here. I'm just being honest with you. It is so key to longevity, a healthy longevity, okay? So we took some uh, mouse liver cells. All right, this is kind of our proof of concept study. We took mouse liver cells and we exposed them to increasing doses of PQQ for 24 to 48 hours, okay? And we measured things that would tell us that there's more mitochondrial activity and simply more mitochondria. It's not important that we understand all this, but we looked at key things that would tell us as scientists that yes, this cell has more mitochondria and they're active and they're making energy. So let's go to the next slide. So what I want you to see here is really over here. We actually are able to add a little protein that attaches to the mitochondria surface and it fluoresces and I can see it under a microscope. So here is that mouse liver cell before any PQQ. So you can see there's some mitochondria in there. You see some staining, right? You see some fluorescence, but yeah, it's a little dark, right? But post PQQ, 48 hours, look at the difference. PQQ not only increases mitochondrial content, it does it quickly. A dose or two of PQQ can make you feel better right now. That's the power of pyroloquinoline quinone. So the fact that this is fluorescing more is telling me there's more mitochondria in these mouse liver cells. Next slide. So that's PQQ, pyroloquinoline quinone. Doc, yeah. Comparison to, to CoQ10 with that. Yeah, great question. So um, CoQ10, and who, again, you guys know about CoQ10. You guys heard that before? All right. CoQ10 works inside the mitochondria. It helps the actual pathways that turn the food into ATP. But think about it this way. And I'll give you a case study that I actually taught to a life extension health advisor. Let's say you have an 80-year-old man who had a heart attack. And one of the best things you can do for anybody who's had a heart attack is give him CoQ10. More energy, right? Makes sense. So you give this man CoQ10, let's say 200 milligrams a day. A month later, he comes back and he still feels horrible after the heart attack. Why is that? Is the CoQ10 not working? No, the CoQ10 doesn't have anywhere to go. That poor old man doesn't have any mitochondria. So CoQ10 needs the mitochondria first to work. So PQQ and CoQ10 combination, powerful. Because now, not only am I making the mitochondria, I'm giving the CoQ10 to actually run those energy pathways. So CoQ10 and PQQ really go together, and we 
And we uh, uh, educate a lot of people at Life Extension about the power of those two nutrients. Good. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about QQ10, are you talking about ubiquinone or, or, or ubiquinol? Um, for me, I only talk about ubiquinol. Uh, so there's two forms of CoQ10. There's ubiquinone and there's ubiquinol. Now, ubiquinone, um, if you spell it out, the last four letters spell out none. N-O-N-E, because you get none in your body. Ubiquinone has none. I mean, it's not true. If ubiquinone is fine, it does it does increase CoQ10 levels a little bit. But ubiquinol, you get all of it. Ubiquinol really gets into your system and increases CoQ10 levels significantly greater than ubiquinone. All right? Let's go. We'll hold your questions. We'll, we'll move on. But, but thank you, Jim. That's good. CoQ10 is, is a foundational energy nutrient, but it needs what to work? It needs mitochondria to work, and that's where PQQ comes in. So the combination is powerful. Everybody got that? That's good. All right. Now, here's the thing. I, I'm giving you PQQ. Mitch, I'm giving you 20 milligrams of PQQ every day, and you've been on it for a month. You're making more mitochondria. But there's still one missing step. I have to turn those mitochondria on. It's kind of like if you build a new powerhouse and you get all the infrastructure ready to go, right? You still got to go in there and do what? You got to turn it on. You got to bring energy into it to turn on the mitochondria. That's the next nutrient. We have to activate something called AMPK. You take PQQ. You make more mitochondria, now I have to turn them on. And that enzyme that does that is called AMPK. Let's go to the next slide. AMPK is what we call, those of us that study longevity, we call it a reversible element of aging. What that means is, so AMPK stands for adenosine monophosphate protein kinase. So whenever you hear um, a chemical word and ends in ACE, that's an enzyme. So AMPK is an enzyme. And it's responsible for turning on the mitochondria. As you get older, what do you think happens to the level of activity of AMPK? Mm -hmm. Woo, it goes down, right? Unfortunately, that's, that's kind of how we describe aging. We lose our hormones. We lose our antioxidants, we lose AMPK, we lose mitochondria, right? Everything drops. But what's the encouraging point I'm, I want to make is these are reversible things. You can make more mitochondria. You can activate more mitochondria. And how do you do that? By activating AMPK. As a matter of fact, a very famous longevity uh, scientist, his name is Dr. Aubrey de Grey, um, most of what we've learned about cellular age comes from his institute, the SENS Institute. He says, we die not of old age, but of cumulative fa failures within our cellular machinery. You see, AMPK, if it's an, it's an enzyme, if it's not active enough, it doesn't matter how many mitochondria you have. It doesn't matter how much CoQ10 you take. You've got to turn those things on. We got to reactivate this enzyme, and that's why we call it a reversible element of aging. We can actually turn this enzyme on. Next slide. So AMPK again, adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase (AMPK). It is your master metabolic switch. The this one enzyme important job, right? So every time you bring in food, this enzyme decides. Do I need to take that food and store it, or do I need to take that food and burn it? That's how important this enzyme is. It controls metabolic pathways that help us to turn that food into ATP, that cell chemical energy. It senses each cell's energy status and triggers responses that maintain optimum energy levels. What do you, does that all sound pretty important? Yeah, and so what do you think? happens to us when AMPK is turned off. Everything breaks down. Metabolism breaks down. I no longer, my cells can no longer judge whether they should store energy or make energy. And that's a major problem as we get older. Next slide. 
So here's what we've learned. This is from a magazine article that Life Extension put out. Um, this is all research based. Uh, we know that overnutrition, what do I mean by overnutrition? Um, in this country, we are overfed and undernourished. You guys know, you guys have heard that before? Yeah. yeah. We, um, I mean, we're, I don't know any other place you can go and get for one dollar, get a double cheeseburger that probably has 1,500 calories, <laughs> but it has absolutely no nutrition to it, right? It's kind of, it's got, so we're eating lots. We're eating lots, but we're sick. <laughs> That's what we mean by overnutrition. Uh, genetics, inactivity, all of these things, age itself, can, can decrease AMPK activity. And when that happens, we have shown in research, when AMPK is not active, we've shown that that leads to diabetes, high blood pressure, certain cancers, liver issues, of, uh, polycystic ovarian disease, Alzheimer's, lipid problems, and atherosclerosis. All of those things right here. I mean, in this country, these are our diseases. And we are linking them to low AMPK activity. So that doesn't now let's let me let me say so. Does that mean that I'm saying low AMPK causes all these things? No, no. What I'm saying is it's associated. We know that at about age 50, cancers of the bowels, cancers of the brain, prostate, ovaries, cervical, all of those things about age 50 take off. And it is interesting at that time what drops AMPK. Because if the cell can't make energy, it can't protect itself. It can't make the antioxidants. It can't ease inflammation. And all of these things are triggers for certain cancers. So we're not saying AMPK is a cause of those. It's not causing it, but it's an association. So we want to reactivate, next slide, AMPK levels. So Life Extension is doing it with two plant-based extracts. We have Gynostenum pentaphyllum and Rose Canina. Rose Canina comes from dog rose. Uh, more people probably know rose canina as, um, uh, go ahead, yeah, rose hips. Rose hips um, is what rose canina is. Now, we're not using the rose hips. That has a lot of vitamin C. We're using the, the actual flower from that plant, and it's called rose canina. These two plants together have been um, shown in research, proven in research, to increase AMPK activity. Next slide. So here's, here's rose canina over here. I mean, I'm sorry, gynostenum over here, and here's rose canina. I just wanted to summarize just some of the research we've put together already. So there was a 2012 mouse study. Now notice there, these are still a lot in animal models. This is all new stuff. The next phase is to take these out into clinical trials, and we're doing that at Life Extension. But I'm kind of showing you the pre uh, preliminary research that we did. So 2012 mouse study. We gave mice gynostenum in, uh, gynostenum in this case, and they had an 8% drop in body weight, 10% drop in deep fat in the, in, in the mouse, 15% drop in surface fat, 14% drop in lipids in their blood, and an 18% drop in liver weight. Why do you think liver weight went down? What does that tell you? Liver fat. Yeah. Listen, one of the key things your liver has to do is detoxify stuff, right? Well, after years and years and decades of living in this crazy environment, our livers get congested. Most of us sitting in here right now have heavy, big livers. I was a radiologist before I went to natural medicine, and I remember looking at CT scans and ultrasounds uh, in people that came into the emergency room. I saw more fatty livers that you would imagine, probably 30% of the um, CT scans I looked at, people had fatty liver, and they didn't know it. So the fact that I'm activating AMPK, I'm helping the liver make more energy, it decongests, and guess what happens? Liver weight goes down almost 20%. That's the power of turning on AMPK. There was a human, it was a small human diabetes study, we're gonna do more of this at Life Extension, 
but giving humans uh, gynostenum, we had a five-fold drop in fasting glucose, a ten-fold drop in hemoglobin A1C, and a three-fold drop in insulin resistance with two plant extracts. That's pretty awesome. And then rose canina, kind of the same thing. Increased fat burning, drop in triglycerides. As a matter of fact, in one mouse study, they compared rose canina to metformin. You guys ever hear of metformin? It's a diabetes drug. In this one mouse study, now I, I, I gotta make that clear, in this one mouse study, rose canina beat metformin. Rose canina dropped sugar levels by 30%, metformin only did it by 23% in these, in these rat models. Now I can't tell you rose canina is better than metformin, but that's an interesting study. That's one that we're gonna use and actually study in humans now, okay? So that's the power of turning on AMPK. So you take PQQ, PQQ does what for us? I'm gonna quiz you guys, what does PQQ do? You can do it, come on guys, you can do it. Yeah, it doesn't just work with them, it increases the number of mitochondria. Generates But It generates them, but I gotta turn them on, I gotta come into the powerhouse and turn it on right, that's what AMPK does. So you have PQQ making more powerhouses, AMPK activators like gynostenum and rose canina are turning on those powerhouses. Now when you take CoQ10, it's really gonna work. Because it has a place to go. And it has a powerhouse that's turned on. That's what CoQ10 needs. Okay, next slide. Now, last thing. Notice most of my, my talk today, or tonight, I'm talking about longevity, right? Longevity nutrition. And I've been focusing mostly on what? Energy. You think that's important? This is pretty simple. If you can't make consistent amounts of cellular energy in all of your cell lines, your thyroid breaks down, your ovaries break down, your testicles break down, your brain cells break down. I mean, it makes sense, right? If they don't have energy, they can't function. We have to improve cell energy production. And now this is the last part of this. This is one of my favorites. It's a new form of vitamin B3. You guys know vitamin B3, niacin, right? Anybody ever take a bunch of niacin and flush? Yeah, yeah did you freak out? Yeah. yeah, some people like it. I have a friend that works out with it. <laughs> no, he does. Yeah, it's great for He takes like 1,500 milligrams of niacin, gets red as a beet, and he's in there working out. I, just, he loves it. I don't know. I hate it. I can't stand I can't stand that flesh. It freaks me out. But anyway, he's like, well, nicotinamide riboside is a new form of vitamin B3. It's similar to niacin. You know, all of the vitamins have subforms, right? There's, you know, um, vitamin E has like six or seven forms. There's two forms of vitamin K. Well, it turns out that vitamin B3 has many forms. Niacin's just one of it, it's a classic. Well, another form of B3 is nicotinamide riboside. If you take this, you won't flush. But why would you want to take this? Because it does something very important for those powerhouses. Let's go to the next slide. Great. Yeah. Right. Well, so he, this, this, now I really want to focus on this slide. This is brand new stuff. You guys are learning brand new longevity research with this one slide. There is, anybody take high school chemistry? You guys remember we years there? Long time ago, right? right. Well, in high school chemistry, they actually teach you a type of chemical reaction that is probably one of the most important things to human longevity. We just didn't know it until just a few years ago. That reaction is called a redox reaction. It stands for oxidation reduction. Let me, let me just explain. You take a compound, it could be any kind of chemical compound, and this compound will transfer a electron to another compound. Now, electrons are charged positive or negative? Oh, ne electrons are negative. Negative, negative. Both would be very interesting. That would be a different universe. But electrons in our current universe, where we live, are negative. So if, I have, if I'm holding on electron, and I pass that on, and I'm a compound, right? And I pass that electron on to Mitch, 
Mitch takes on a positive or negative charge? Negative. negative. So negative, in a sense, he reduces and I go up. Does that make sense? Like I lost a negative and Mitch gained a negative. So in the redox reaction, if this is me, I'm giving the electron to B, which is Mitch. So I go up and Mitch goes down. Mitch becomes reduced. That's the idea of an oxidation reduction reaction. It's simply a transfer of an electron. It's that simple. But that transfer drives a vast majority of your cellular functions. When I can pass an electron on, I pass a charge on basically, a negative charge, it's almost like electricity. Think about it, right? A movement of electrons is electricity. So redox reactions are key to life. Now here's the thing. When I pass an electron on to Mitch, Mitch is not good at grabbing it. He fumbles it and he loses it. So the body has come up with electron shuttles. So instead of passing my electron directly on to Mitch, I pass it on to a shuttle, that's you. The shuttle grabs it and gives it to Mitch nice and easy so Mitch doesn't fumble it. A key electron shuttle in the body is called NAD. Write that one down. NAD. It stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Fan just go with NAD. NAD is an electron shuttle. Without NAD, Mitch would never get that electron. The entire redox reaction would break down in your body if you don't have shuttles. So NAD is a key electron shuttle in redox reactions. And it turns out, redox reactions, essential to life. So, do we want a whole bunch of NAD or do we want less NAD? A whole, everybody say it, a whole a bunch, right? The more NAD I have in my body, the more this kind of reaction happens. And for instance, guess, guess, guess what is really key or, or what's really dependent on redox reactions in your body? Cell energy. The entire process of making ATP is based on movement of electrons, redox reactions. So it turns out that NAD, this shuttle, he loves the mitochondria. That's where he lives. And he's going to shuttle electrons along this food to ATP pathway. So the more NAD you have, guess what you make more of? Energy. Energy. Well, we'll get, we'll ask that, because we'll get to that, all right? So let's go to the next slide. So everybody follow that. Everybody get that? That was key. Redox reactions are key to life. Just remember that. Movement of electrons is life. And in order for that to happen, you need an electron shuttle. And NAD is one of your most important electron shuttles. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is found in every cell in your body. If you find something in every cell in your body you think is pretty important, yes, good answer, right? And it is critical for regulating genes that accelerate aging. It is key for cell energy production. I mean, again, it's an electron shuttle for redox reaction, which are key to life. When NAD levels decline, energy transfer breaks down, and we get mitochondrial dysfunction. And when you get mitochondrial dysfunction, what do we call that? Age, aging, right? Well, I already told you about age 70, you've lost how much of your mitochondrial content? Six, oh, they're listening, Jen, that was great. 60%, right? Part of that is we need to make new ones, PQQ, we gotta turn them on AMPK, but we have to support those chemical reactions, that's NAD. We need more NAD in our cells. Next slide, please. Ask me that at the end. Ah. All right, Here, here's how important this is. Key slide, right? All right, when you lose NAD plus levels, NAD declines, right? Here's what we know in research. This is research supported bullet points. When NAD plus levels drop, 
you get nerve problems, vascular inflammation, fatty liver. That's non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Remember when I was a radiologist, I saw a lot of this. Uh, you get an increase in fat tissue. You get insulin resistance, and you get mitochondrial dysfunction. All of these things are related to NAD plus decline. Well, guess what we call these things? Aging. That's what, that's what aging is, right there. So low NAD plus levels accelerates aging. Higher NAD plus levels slows down aging. Why? You're supporting redox reactions. You're, re you're supporting the reactions of life, specifically in making cell energy. Next slide. All right, so and here's where I started. Here's what we're going to go back to where I started with. Nicotine and my herbicide, that fancy form of B3. It's found in milk in trace amounts. It's a unique form of vitamin B3. No fleshy. Good news, right? Uh, unless you want to work out like my friend. That's not good. He's, he's going to stick with the nice end. It's the most effective precursor to form NAD+. So it turns out vitamin B3 in all of its forms will eventually turn into NAD. It's one of the key reasons we take niacin. Niacin turns into NAD+. When you have more NAD+, you have more activity of cell energy production, which means you burn fat better, cholesterol better. That's why niacin is so good for your heart. But it turns out niacin, it takes niacin, I don't remember the exact number, but it takes niacin maybe like six chemical conversions to form NAD, plus you flush, right? Well, nicotinamide riboside turns into NAD plus in only four steps, and there's no fleshing. So we consider at life extension nicotinamide riboside the best precursor to supporting NAD plus levels in your body. All right, next slide. Oh, that's that one. Okay, good. So let's review. How do I make more mitochondria? AQQ, right? Why is that important? Anybody? Why do I want more mitochondria? Energy, right? Remember, loss of energy production, loss of the mitochondria has been a leading theory of, long of aging since the 1950s. Now, there's other theories that are things going on, but it's a key one. Does it make sense? If your body can't make energy, what is your what happens to your liver cells? You get fat. You get fatty liver disease. What happens if your brain cells can't make energy? They break down and you get dementias and you get strokes. Does it make sense? Yes. So we have to support energy production. Life extension puts a lot of money into energy, cell energy production in research because we think it really is key. So PQQ makes more mitochondria. How do I turn the mitochondria on? AMPK, gynostenum and rose canina, right? Now, that's great. Now I gotta just go in there and I have to actually improve those reactions, right? I have to improve those redox reactions and that's where nicotinamide riboside comes in. So now I have more mitochondria, I'm turning them on, and now I'm actually doing the chemical reactions better. So that's the beauty of focusing on PQQ, AMPK activators, and things that boost NAD+. That regimen right there is truly a longevity regimen that you can do right now. Okay, last thing. I'm gonna move away from cell, from cell energy, I'm gonna go to something else. What you're about to see is some research that is giving me more confidence to say the words age reversal. Think about that for a moment. I'm, I'm, I'm about 99% there that we are about to reverse age. You believe me? Let's look at it. Let's go to the next slide. All right. Now, hang with me. This is a big concept, okay? <coughs> we have discovered that there's a process that happens at the cell level, and that process is called senescence. Senensis is just a fancy word for something that's dying off. So when a healthy cell lives its life and goes through all of its functions and divides and makes daughter cells, there comes a point when that cell begins to kind of get bad, get old. At that point, when the body recognizes that a cell 
has kind of lost the ability to function good and make daughter cells, the body tells that cell to stop functioning and stop dividing. That, at that point, that cell is called senescent. Senescence is the stop or the, the inhibition of the body for that cell to divide, okay? So here you have a healthy cell and it goes through its normal life and things like oxidative stress happen, inflammation, there's DNA damage, that's just normal things, right? That's normal life. But at some point, this cell gets so damaged, the body says you're done. Stop dividing, stop functioning. But there's a problem with that. That may sound okay, but those cells that become senescent, they get kind of um, old and grumpy. They don't like being told they can't do anything. So these senescent cells, they start to spit out inflammatory markers. They start to spit out oxidative stress. They start to spit out other types of toxins that begin to damage cells around them. And so one senescent cell can spread and cause other cells to become senescent. That spread of senescent cells throughout a tissue is really what we see as the aches and pains of aging. The breakdown of joint tissue, the breakdown of your skin, the breakdown of your bones. It's all linked to what is called cellular senescence. Next slide, please. So this is a really, I like this slide because it kind of shows it. So here's a bunch of cells. These are healthy cells and they're all making up, say, like your heart tissue, okay? And these lightning bolts represent normal things like toxins, uh, oxidative stress, just normal things of life. So some of the cells get damaged and they turn blue. Those are your senescent cells. Now, the way when you're young, when this happens, because this happens all through life, but when you're 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and you have a good, strong immune system, all that kind of stuff, these senescent cells get attacked by the um, immune system, and then you eventually clear them, and then you replace them with healthy cells. But as we get older, we don't do that. These senescent cells build up. See, there's a lot more blue cells there, right? We don't get rid of them. So the senescent cells build up, and that's the tissue degeneration of aging. So at Life Extension, what we've been focusing on is number one, helping cells that quite aren't senescent, get them healthy again. Make sense? Push them back in time. Reverse them in age to make them healthy cells. Now, there may be some of these senescent cells that are just too old, so we're going to help the body kill them off. So we're going to help some cells reverse back to healthy, and we're going to help other cells just kind of kill off. At the end of the day, what we're doing is we're clearing the tissue. We're removing that degeneration, allowing your body to repopulate with healthy cells. Next slide. So here's another look at it. So here's a cell that's functioning, that's kind of maybe got some damage. We call it pre-senescent. Eventually, if we don't do something, this cell is going to become senescent and cause a problem. So at Life Extension, we want to take cells that are starting to become senescent. We want to revert them back. This is that age reversal process. But at the same time, if we have a cell that's just too old, let's kill it off. So we're focused on looking at nutrients that could take a cell before it's senescent, make it healthy again, or if it's just too senescent, get rid of it. And we found a combination of nutrients that does that. Next slide. The way we came up with this, by the way, we're calling this whole line of um, nutrients, we're calling them gero protectors. Gero simply means aging. So these are age protectors. Now, in order for us to really discover the first four nutrients that we found that, that did this, if we didn't have the help of computers, it would have taken us decades to come up with this information. It is so complicated inside a cell. All the different pathways that determine whether a cell gets older or younger, it is so complicated. It, I mean, it's taking us decades just to put a few of these pathways together. So instead, we are now using, um, let's go to the next slide. We are now using, at Life Extension, 
artificial intelligence. We're using computers to help us find general protectors. So these computers are able to analyze all these different studies that have been done throughout the world, and they're able to pull out the right nutrients that have the most probability of being a general protector. Now once the computer spits these out to us, we verify it in the lab then, but we're saving decades by using artificial intelligence. It's really quite amazing. It, it's, it's gonna be, in the future, how we formulate just about anything using the computer to tell us where to go. We still have to verify it. We don't trust computers completely, and they're going to take over the world, and we're worried about that. <laughs> but um, we do verify what they say, but it's saving us years and years of research using the computer. Next slide. So we discovered using the computers that EGCG, where does that come from? Green tea. Green tea. Myrosetin, anybody hear that one? Myrosetin is a plant-based antioxidant. It's a polyphenol, right? It's found in a lot of citrus fruit. Um, gamma tocotrienol, what is that? Vitamin E, and it's that specific form. Remember, vitamin E has many forms. One of the forms of vitamin E is called gamma tocotrienol. That's the one that is a general protector. And then, what about this one, NAC? What does that stand for? You guys are trying, I know it. And, and acetylcholine. And acetylcysteine. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough, that's a good right. job. Yeah. And acetylcysteine, and they see uh, it's a precursor to glutathione, a powerful antioxidant in your body. These four nutrients, the computer told us, are geroprotectors. They're going to take cells that are about to become senescent and make them young again. And they're going to also take cells that are too senescent and they're going to kill them off. So we're clearing out our tissues, which is what we want. Let me, let me show you the next slide. Here's where they work. Remember this slide? So it turns out NAC, N-acetylcysteine, is really good at age reversal. It's able to take cells that are about to become senescent and turn them healthy again. All four of them are able to prevent cellular stress in general, like the DNA damage, oxidative stress, inflammation, all four of these can stop that. And then the green tea, the vitamin E, and the myrosetin are really good about getting rid of cells that are just too senescent. Old grumpy cells that just need to go, right? So we have a combination of nutrients that are clearing out the tissue of these unwanted cells. So it in a sense is refreshing your tissues, which means your organs are refreshed and we do believe this is the beginning of true age reversal therapies. Next slide. And that's all of the um, references for uh, everything that I presented tonight. So we always do everything at Life Extension, evidence-based, everything is based on the review. So let's do a quick summary. Longevity, if you're gonna, what kind of foods are you gonna eat to live longer? Mediterranean, green, Green leafy, dark green leafy, olives, fermented foods are good. What type of olives? There's a whole bunch of them. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Let's talk about that when, when I open up for discussion. So, so, but what's the key thing you're getting out of the Mediterranean diet? The plant-based antioxidants, and they're called polyphenols. See if anybody remembers this. How many polyphenols in milligrams should you eat a day? 1,500. Say it. 1,500. You're way off. 1,500 milligrams of polyphenols. How many of us eat 1,500 milligrams of polyphenols? Nobody probably should. Well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Very few people eat. Remember, Life Extension does have a pill you can take that gives you an additional 400 when you try to eat the diet. Okay, so that's good. Polyphenols. Now, longevity, we really believe that Life Extension is based on energy. So how do I make more mitochondria? PQQ. PQQ, right? Now, once I made more mitochondria, I got to turn them on, and that's AMPK activators, gynostenum and rose canina. And then I got to go in there, and I got to turn all those pathways on, the redox reactions, which is life, and that's where I want to boost NAD plus levels, and that's going to be done with nicotinamide riboside, right? That's that special form of vitamin B3. 
that regimen right there, along with the polyphenols from your diet, let me tell you something, that could add healthy years to your life. Most people at this point ask me, well, how many years? Well, that's a hard question, right? Everybody's different, genetics plays a role. Uh, but I, I do believe improving energy production and eating the polyphenols like you should, I think most people can add five, six, seven years easy, healthy years to their life, okay? Hold on, what's that? All right, so everybody got that, right? Everybody good? All right, now what for question? <laughs> okay, even if it just gives you, it gives you five years or whatever, but the effect of feeling better during those times. So important. So and important. isn't that worth it? Did we have a, a microphone for them to answer? Yeah. Jim, Jim, you got the yeah, microphone? microphone? Yes. We have one right here, Jim. Let's use the microphone so everybody can hear and have a repeat. Who's got a question? Well, right over here and then over here. Yes, sir. Just by hearing what you have. Is it on? It's on. Oh, it's on. Okay. Just by hearing that you can add years to your life, yeah. number one, it's great. But uh, it's going to also make you have that energy. There's yeah. nothing better than feeling more energized. Yeah. You know, to feel like, you know, yeah. well, you make a good point. Right so, I mean, it's worth taking just just to feel better, yeah. even though your life might end at the same time as both end. You feel you better up to that point. You're going to feel better. So we have a saying at Life Extension. You leave a good looking course. Yeah, yeah. we did. <laughs> so we did. Quality. We, we, oh. we, we have a saying at Life Extension that we want to live long and die fast. Does that make sense? Yeah. Live long and die fast. But, um, modern medicine, conventional modern medicine has increased the human lifespan. But has it done it in a healthy way? No. Go to your average internal medicine doctor or geriatric uh, practice. Go into that clinic and look at people sitting in those chairs. I mean, I, I hate this. My dad falls into this. He's like 86 now. He's on probably, I don't know, I mean, I can't think of it. The only supplement my dad takes is the red wine supplement. <laughs> oh, Resveratrol. Resveratrol, that's the only And that's how he refers to it. Hey, where's my red wine supplement? He drinks a lot of red wine too, but that's probably the one reason he's 80-something. But he's on like 20 drugs, he just, he just, he doesn't look at it. He doesn't. And so, it's, it, it's not just about years. It is about healthy years. You see what and I'm, that's what this does. I'm rocking, yeah. and I'm driving people probably crazy all the time. I have ADHD, yeah. and I haven't been on the medicine for like nearly a month. And this is what it causes. And I'm embarrassed by it. That's why I usually try to sit in the back normally. So you know, it's hard to control. Yeah. You know. So I mean, there's a medicine there. Do you have any other questions? Yes. I had a question about um, when you were saying giving you energy. Would D-ribose do the same thing? Or is that totally different? No, great question. So, do you, everybody familiar? Anybody hear the question? D-ribose. Um, everybody hear of D-ribose before? No. No. Okay. D-ribose is a sugar, but it's a non-dietary sugar, meaning it won't raise sugar levels in your blood. So, D-ribose can be taken by diabetics. D-ribose is a non-dietary sugar that is works inside the mitochondria, like CoQ10. So, it does give you energy. But again, if you're getting older and we're losing our mitochondria, CoQ10, D-ribose, those things won't work as well until we boost up our mitochondria content with PQQ. But I do like D-ribose. It's a great sweetener for coffee and other things. Can I ask another? Yes. Um, the, well, also the D-ribose, you have candida, should you stay away from that? Better? No, because it's non-dietary. Okay. And fine. the other one is, would you get di when you said the cells die and they get rid of them? Mm -hmm. Would you get die off symptoms like heart, heart No, symptoms? no. We're talking about. Can you let's go back one slide? I lost my. Uh, Mitch gave up. Um, when when we help senescent cells die off, like for instance, one of those pathways is called apoptosis. You guys, have you heard of that before? It's programmed yeah. cell death. That's a normal thing, and that's a good thing. That's not like we're killing off like bacterial cells and you get this weird like these weird flu like symptoms or no this is a normal process that your body likes it's healthy it yeah. regenerates them yeah. eventually we want to do that yeah. okay. hi i'm ready to take everything you said but how do you take it how do you take yeah. it yeah good, good morning question. afternoon evening together what do you take it with yeah very good so all of our um pqq um, the AMPK activators, gynostenum, and what was the other one? 
You guys didn't really go be quizzed, did you? Yeah. Why can't I quiz you guys? You guys came or you want to learn something, right? So, Rose Canina. <laughs> Rose She couldn't make it tonight. Yeah, Rose <laughs> So, Guinness Stenum, Rose Canina, um, and Nicotinamide Ribosome. All of those are water-based. You can do it with or without food. I think the I think PQQ is once a day, anytime. Um, nicotinamide riboside once a day, anytime. But I think the A and PK activators are twice a day. But we could check that, right? I think they're twice a day. But all of them, with or without food, because they're nice water-based nutrients. They get in, they absorb well. So go ahead. <laughs> it it sounds so easy. Yeah, yeah. did you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. let's Okay, so let's go to your father. Suppose you have someone in the family who's on uh, the SART crest door. You know, the, the yeah. cardiologists are now talking. They understand coenzyme Q10, but um, they don't understand that that's not enough. Yeah. That they don't understand that. Yeah, but I guess my question is, this combination of three, will it neutralize any of the allopathic prescriptions? Very good question. So through our, our studies, we have found no known drug interactions okay. with any of these. Um, they are metabolized in different liver pathways than the, most of those allopathic drugs. So they're perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, I make the argument, see, Again, my dad only takes the red wine supplement. That's all he does. He has no problem taking the prescription drugs. Interesting, right? But he, oh, right. he doesn't listen to me, whatever. But if I could, I would give him CoQ10 and PQQ at least. Because I, at least, because I think if he did that, I actually think the drugs might actually work better. He would metabolize them better. He had less side effects. So that's the key with energy. The more energy production you have, you metabolize things better. You get better effect without all the bad stuff. So that's, yeah, that's a good question. In the back? I'm, I'm just trying to spread it out. Yeah, sure. Um, going to the back to the redox is life slide. The, uh, the NAD plus, and then at yeah. the very bottom, there's NADH. Yeah. So if I understand you correctly, it's transfers, it's trans transfers electrons, NAD right. is positive, and, and it it's picks up an electron. Okay, it, it's giving up an electron. No, it picks up one. It picks up one. It becomes oh. NADH. And it becomes NADH, and that adds another hydrogen uh, cell? Yeah, it does. It adds, it adds, yes, and that's NADH, and then that passes it off to the next. So what's, okay. what's important to understand, NAD is simply a shuttle. The, the most important players in this is here and here. I'm trying to get an electron from one compound to the other, but electrons, when they get out in the environment, they scatter. It's like electricity. So that's why I need shuttles. So NAD becomes reduced because it, it received the electron, becomes NADH, and then it gives the electron, passes on, and becomes NAD plus again. And it keeps cycling like that. Now, there are supplements of NADH out there. Have you guys seen those? That's why I wanted to... Yeah, there are NADH supplements, and I do think they have some efficacy. The only problem is, is NADH tends to, when you take it in the supplement form, it tends to kind of stay by itself, and it doesn't participate in these reactions. So you get like this storage of NADH that's not doing anything. And maybe a little bit. What's better is to supply the active NAD plus that then plays in this cycle. That's why we like nicotinamide ribosome. Okay. Question here? Sorry. Yeah, you got a question. Did you, would you say by not eating organic and non-GMO food you would be defeating the purpose of this? I mean, okay, so let me, if I'm eating bad food basically, is that what you're saying? Like, does it, well, sure, right? I mean, we got it. Remember, all of these nutrients only play a part in overall longevity and health, right? I got to eat the Mediterranean diet. I got to eat, and, and what's the key thing in the Mediterranean diet? It's fresh. It's not processed. It's not all gunked up with chemicals. It's organic. It's fresh. That's absolutely key to all of it. That's why I started this with the polyphenols. 
Good question. So I have high cholesterol and I was taking the niacin. Can you hold it up a little? I have high cholesterol. I was taking the niacin, plus the flushing. And, and then, so I guess my question is that nicotinamide riboside, since that is also B3, would that do you help with your cholesterol? Great question. Because I was also Not taking as that. good as niacin. Okay. So if you're taking niacin for cholesterol and you're having some benefit, I would still do niacin for that. But ni and you're probably getting a little bit of NAD plus out of that, but not a whole lot. So I would add nicotinamide riboside to that. So nicotinamide riboside quickly in the body turns into NAD plus. It doesn't really affect lipids. Okay. Is there any studies on um, Beyond the rat studies, no human studies yet. Uh, we'll go, we'll go, we're going to decide now. Then we'll come back to you. Get it first. I just wanted to know: Are these in capsule forms? Or? These are all capsules. Yes. Uh, yeah. How about um, as as for Xanthan, um, for I mean, is I know I give that to my dog, and so I know it works on his skin. Yeah. I, I take it myself. Yeah. All right, but he has one eye, and that's why I have it. Okay. Know, so yeah. his eye stays healthy, yeah. but it's good for your skin, and he lost all these little warts he had on his skin and everything else. Um, that's an anti-aging. Um, it's an antioxidant, yes. Also, would yeah. that work all right with these? Sure, yeah, so he's asking if you, yeah. so there's there's probably other antioxidants and other- uh, thousands, and they go all through different Yeah, they, they all work in different ways. You know, we, we know that um, oxidative stress, remember I mentioned that before, the buildup of free radicals. We've learned that one free radical is very different how versus another free radical. And it turns out the body has figured that out. And so you make naturally antioxidants that might be like focused on one type of free radical. You know, astaxanthin is great for the eyes. Pomegranate free radical uh, antioxidants are great for your cardiovascular system. So nature has these antioxidants that seem to target different types of free radicals. All right. That's why you want a rainbow of... Uh, yeah, yeah, you definitely. You can't just, you can't just say I'm going to do vitamin C and I'm done. That's not that's not going to cover all these other free radicals that are building up. Um, any other questions right here? If you take all of this, how soon would you see results? Like three months, six months, a year? Well, when you say results, we have to be a little more specific, right? So if you're talking about, let's say you have high cholesterol or high triglycerides, and you start doing this regimen, and you start burning that better, I would say three months you should see a drop in some of those numbers. Now, but keep keep in mind, we're not saying these things are direct cholesterol-lowering nutrients. We're not saying that they're triglyceride-lowering nutrients. What we are saying is that if you rev up cell energy production, you metabolize those things naturally better, and you, you will get a benefit. But if you're trying to lower cholesterol, maybe you're doing red yeast rice, I wouldn't stop that. You're still going to do that thing that's more specific to cholesterol, but when you rev up your energy production, you're going to get a better effect of the red yeast. How about the energy? Will that soon? Yeah, now, okay, so um, if you are really low on all this stuff, your mitochondrial content is low, your NAD plus levels are really low, right? Your AMPK activation is really low. If you start taking all this, you initially will feel energized pretty quickly. A week or so of taking these things. However, that should not last. Because as your body reaches kind of like this steady state with these, and your energy production's up, that's where you're supposed to be, and you start living in that norm, and you don't necessarily feel as energized as you did when you first started. So it's very normal, even if you do a really good dose of ubiquinol CoQ10, if your levels are real low, for a few days you're going to be like, woohoo, it's great. But then two or three, four weeks later, you're like, yeah, I really don't feel anymore. But that's because you're at a steady state, and that's actually good. So you should feel it, and then you should level out. That's normal. You know, Doc, we, we get a lot of questions about energy all the time. And, yeah. I mean, there's iron uh, stores, there's your thyroid. There's so your many things. There's so many things that can affect your lack of sleep. Right. Uh, it's a tough It's a tough call sometimes. It tells yeah. somebody what's going to yeah. absolutely work. We're, and, 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 so, and, we, and this is a good point. We're talking about energy at the cell level. ATP production. We're not necessarily talking about a huge double shot thing of espresso and you're running around. Man, that's that's a stimulant. 
That's not what we're really talking about. We're talking about feeling a better energy uh, to the point where if you drink coffee, you drink it because you enjoy it, not because you need it. Okay. It's that type of energy. Okay? It's a, it give you a sense of well-being. Well-being. You sleep better. You dream better. You exercise better. But you may not feel, I mean, you still may want a shot of espresso once in a while, you know, but that's, that's different. Okay? All right, good question. Okay. I'll exercise too. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. um, does the Mediterranean diet um, include like red meat? Or oh, well, no, it can, yes, okay, so with that, great question. It turns out there's many types of Mediterranean diet. It, it, yeah. If you think of the Mediterranean basin, right, you have, you have, you have Greece, you have the, you know, Palestine and, and those, and then you have um, North Africa, right, and you even have some of the Middle East down here. So that all is Mediterranean, they're all a little different. So some of those areas do eat red meat more than others. Where I come from, where my family came from, it was mostly fish. Not so much the red meat, but there are parts that do. Good red meat that comes from organic uh, beef that's grass-fed, that's not bad. Beef got bad because we're feeding these things corn and grains. Yeah, yeah, I do think, I think overall though, if you read any Mediterranean diet book, they usually suggest maybe a serving of red meat a week. The rest of the protein is coming from fish and poultry. Okay. Yeah. Um, and how do you feel about, I'm sorry, dairy, like raw dairy milk and, you know, I mean, is it, that's in the Mediterranean diet? Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. I mean, so it's not the, like some people take out all different food groups and there's yeah, all these crazes about yeah. and they make you feel crazy most, about. Most yeah. of the Mediterranean um, diets, like that, in that area, they don't drink a lot of milk, first of all. No. Now, they'll but use they milk to ferment. They'll make yogurts, they'll make cheeses, but they don't drink. We're, we're one of the few countries that actually drinks cow milk. That's actually a rare thing throughout the world. It's not, yeah. And my personal, this is, you guys, this is just my opinion. This is not written in the textbooks. We're not baby cows. I just, I, I think a little bit of fermented milk is good. I'm just not a big fan of drinking cow milk. That's just my opinion. Okay, thank you. And, and if you have cereal, what would be the best milk? Just the, 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 the Listen, if you, if you want, if it's a good cereal and you want to use cow, that, that's fine. I mean, I'm not, but we tend to drink a lot. I mean, I remember growing up on my dad's side of the family, which was German, we came out, they drink milk like at every meal. You know, and that's not my favorite thing. Okay. Lenny, what, what, I guess one more question? One more going, going. GMO free, the that's all everything. Like, like, we have, I'm sorry? The telomere. The telomere. Like, they yes. said that uh, the length uh, depends on the age of your age. Very good. So he's, he's asking about the telomeres. You guys familiar with telomeres? Yeah. Telomeres are the ends of a chromosome. When the telomere gets too short, it's almost like the body, it's like a clock for the body, right? The shorter and shorter it gets, it's basically telling the body that that cell's been dividing enough. And if the cell gets old and keeps dividing, that's where mistakes can happen and cancers come from. So telomere does give us an idea of how old a cell might be. Um, and so there are therapies that are looking at ways of increasing telomere length. However, there's a lot of uh, researchers, me included, that believe that although increasing telomere length might be a part of longevity, you still have to help that cell be healthy. That's the key thing. So I think telomere lengthening along with energy production, that would be a good combination. I don't think telomere lengthening on its own is going to give us the longevity benefits we think. Yeah, you talk about the you know, life extension. Uh, you can call them with questions and um, yeah. also blood tests that they do. And... Sure. So we have, um, I, I, we're one of the few supplement companies that has wellness advisors. Uh, they are a group of doctors, medical doctors, naturopathic doctors, chiropractors, PhD scientists. We have fitness trainers, uh, Chinese medicine specialists. I mean, the whole gamut's there. Um, you can call oncologists. Yeah, you can call. It's free. You can ask any question you want. You're not obligated to buy anything. I mean, Life Extension started as an information-based company. Um, our founders initially, all they wanted to do was to put out a newsletter teaching people that there's something besides allopathic medicine. That's how we started in 1980. And so we, we always kept that to heart. So you can call Life Extension Wellness Specialist and ask them anything you want. You can ask them about your dog, 
Yeah. You can ask about yourself. Or, yeah, it doesn't matter. They're just there to provide information. If they don't know it, what's really cool is they'll 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 take your stuff down. They'll research it for you. Yeah. So if you're on and then they'll call you back. Something, yeah. Right. They'll answer back. Right. They'll call you back and say, here, here's what I found. Uh, you know, maybe this will help. So it, it's really a cool service. Plus, we offer um, lab services too. So we offer uh, different types of nutrient profiles, hormones. Um, omega uh, omega three fatty acid testing, CoQ ten testing. You can check your blood level. Um, we just offer things that you're not going to find in your everyday medical practice. And you can just call the wellness specialist. And they can they can hook you up to that. Okay. Um, okay. Is there a number? Yes. There's a number. It's one 226 2370 it's probably on the back of some of your products. It's it's actually it's, some of your it's at the end of every article. What's that number again? 1-800-226-2370. And at the end of every article, we say, if you want to talk about this, call a wellness special. Is it may not? It's not in this one. Okay. All right. All right. One eight hundred two two six two three seven zero. Did you have a question? Yes. Are these places nearby where you can get these? Yeah, projects? what you do, we work, uh, we have a contract with LabCorp. You guys are familiar. So you order through us, and it's it's kind of like the doctor prescription. And then you take it to your local LabCorp, and they, they do it right there. The results go to us first. We make them all nice and pretty, and we send them all back to you. And then you can call the wellness specialist, and they'll review it with you. Okay? All right. So you don't need to go to your own doctor to get orders for the blood tests. No, you can do it through us. Oh. You're the doctor. Yeah, that's that's the downside is we don't you can't like you're doing it through us, but you can't use your insurance. But most doctors aren't prescribing these tests. Your doctor would be like, why do you need vitamin D tests? But you can do it through us. Hey, but we actually offer it like 50% off retail. So like a hormone panel, don't quote me on the exact amount, but like a hormone panel for a female, like checking all your hormones is maybe like $125. It's really not that bad. Plus you get the doctor at Life Extension review it for free. Okay? All right, thank you guys. That's awesome. All right, thank you.